now your main event. Introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dye and Freddy Prince Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Wrestling with Friends, Wrestling with Freddy. With me, as always, is the great one, Mr. Jeff Dye, and welcome to Wrestling with Friends. <laughs> Our producer Alex is fantastic. I want to say that right off the bat. However, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit going on outside my house today, and if if this comes through clean, y'all need to give him mad love because uh, it's been it's been a crazy few days, man. I've had some neighbors crack. They can't take it. They can't take the construction. It's not my house that's doing it. It's these people across the street. But I've been put in positions where I have to defend the workers from like violence almost because people are going oh crazy. Goodness. I'm telling you, rich people, when you put a car in the road that they have to drive around, apparently that is a mortal sin and the biggest inconvenience <laughs> that they will ever experience. And it makes them do some crazy things where I had to calm them down <laughs> in different ways. That checks out. It They're like, I can't believe people. I have to deal with some sort of thing that's outside of my rich norm. Jeff, it was this one guy. I'll tell you this story. We'll get into wrestling. Wrestling this week kind of sucked anyway. This guy pulls up behind. There were three cars parked, and it's I live on a very narrow road in a canyon. Okay, It's all the information you get, suckers. There's some construction going on scary across road. the street. And it is a scary road for sure. And they're like three, three long down the street. So you can only go into oncoming traffic to get around them. But it's not a blind turn. There's You can, you can see well, this guy has had enough because it's been going on for, a, I'm not even joking, over a month. It's driven me crazy, but I don't go and yell and scream at people because I already called the cops to see if it was legal and they said it was. So F me, that's the end of it. So this guy's had enough. He pulls up and I mean right behind their last work truck and starts screaming, you can't effing park here. Only he's not saying effing. I'm saying it because I love you guys and I'm so respectful. And he just lays on his horn. And now while laying on the horn, continues to scream the same sentence over and over. F you, you can't effing park here. F you, you can't. And he just goes on and on. And I'm upstairs right here where I am now recording. And I'm listening to this. And I'm like, what is going on, man? I'm trying to watch a movie. Like, what the hell is going on? And so I pause the movie. I go downstairs. And I see this, this older guy just going crazy. He's lost it. And so I very calmly walk up to him and, and let him know that there's nothing he can do and he should, you know, take his hand off the horn and stop screaming. And I knew that this was a terrible inconvenience for him, but it was time for him to drive around. And if he needed assistance, I was more than willing to help him. And he saw things, he calmed down, he saw things the right way, and he drove on. The very next day, someone else loses their mind. And I went out and I wasn't as polite to the next, to the second person. They got they got told off and they they tore us out of there. But yeah, so if it gets loud, I apologize. Jeff and I are here for you and it's time to talk some wrestling. How are you, sir? Are you excited that we're, we're people didn't know we were gone, but we were gone for a little bit. Are you excited to be back? I am excited to be back because when I, when I'm not watching or when I'm when we're not doing these, I don't watch as much wrestling because I I'll sure. watch what I like and I'll, I'll watch YouTube videos of the little things, but like Knowing that I have to do an episode on Monday, like I'll watch wrestling during the week. And then like this, this makes me, I was excited to come back, but also excited that I get to watch more wrestling. So I'm very happy to be back. I'm excited to be here. It's good to see your face, buddy. Good to see your face too, everybody. We're going to get into Crown Jewel and our thoughts on that on our Thursday. We call it Unsanctioned Thursdays. Monday Night Raw happened. I want to talk storylines, but I feel like wrestling has kind of fallen into a little bit of a of a whirlpool where they they had these great storylines and all of a sudden they all kind of ran out right around the same time and they're circling to try to figure out the next one that's going to break out is it going to be you know Jey Uso is it going to is it going to be Sami Zayn is it going to like they're trying WWE's trying to kind of figure it out and I don't think they have except with one and it's the main one that i want to talk about and it's someone that i don't think you're a big fan of although you've learned to appreciate him a little bit but if they go the direction i think they're gonna go they're gonna have another story and that's gunther and the miz and i don't think 
you believed I was going to say that. But they had a segment, and Gunther came out and talked to The Miz the way you talk about The Miz. I mean, almost <laughs> word for word. I'm not joking. It, it was yeah. word for word. Like, you're you're an entertainer. You're not a wrestler. You have a reality TV show. I'm a real wrestler. You're not on my level. Like, Miz had his whole Miz TV thing, which he does more than he wrestles. So the things Gunther was saying, they sting, right? Because it's, like, somewhat true, even though Miz is the freaking man. But Miz introduces him, and Gunther no-shows on, on the show. It'd be like if... I was like, and now Jeff die, and it's just crickets. And we're like, no, <laughs> F, F you, jerk. I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> and then he sends out his two boys, Ludwig and what's the other guy's name? Giovanni. And uh, they come out instead, and they basically say, like, you're not worthy, blah, blah, blah. And then Gunther comes out. And he cuts this mean as hell promo on The Miz, and The Miz sold it. With such like sensitivity, like it hurt, like it hurt his feelings, like for real. And I, I felt so bad. I was like, oh man, no, dude, you're the man. <laughs> and then Miz was kind of stuck up for himself and reminded him who he was. And he's got that great promo in his pocket whenever he needs it. He can always cut cut that hole. Nobody believed in me. And look what I've done. A WWE champion. I beat Cena. I beat, I did, the, like he has that one in his pocket to the point where it's kind of old hat now and he should, he should evolve it. But he, he used it, and he used it well. He got the living hell, heck kicked out of him by all three members and then got a little help on a save that went into a tag match that we don't need to talk about unless it was something you love. But I believe, and I don't have an inside source, but there's no reason to have that segment and beat the hell out of Miz unless you're going to pit the two of them. And I think he gave us a couple hints as to that being the story because he said, I made that title you're wearing mean something. I made it mean something more than anybody else. And so if that becomes the story, Miz chasing that title, then I think WWE has something. Otherwise, I don't know what their good story is. And I challenge you to to find it. Like I, I can tell you some bad ones. I can tell you mm. some juvenile ones that don't work because the demo's 18 to 35 and they're doing Chelsea Green and Piper Niven like 13 year old girls doing lay cool nonsense again. And both those women are mm -hmm. way, way better than the story they've been given. I can give you bad examples, but I can't give you many good ones. It, it was hard for me to even find the Miz one in the, in the midst of all that. It was, it was weird because the bloodline went from being awesome, awesome, awesome to falling off a cliff. hundred percent. This whole episode, by the way, they did a fun thing in the in the Gunther Miz thing that I like. This whole episode was like a Halloween coloring, Halloween theme in a way. You know, they had the, all the LEDs were orange and black. Well, I liked that when Gunther and his goons came out, they 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 smashed the Miz's pumpkins in front of them, like that I was know. going to like that was going to make like that was going to make the Miz sad, like the Miz was it up all night. <laughs> Carving his WWE symbol <laughs> upside down into the pumpkin. And then he just, he goes, look at this. He smashes the pumpkin. And the Miz sold it too. Like, hey, don't smash my pumpkin in the ring. I so made that, that with my was, kids. Yeah, it's very funny. Like, like, like he would care. It's like, uh, it's clearly just put in there because it's a Halloween episode. It's not like the Miz <laughs> made it. But I of thought that was not. great. Um, I, you're right. I wouldn't care about the Miz wrestling anything. He could wrestle a tent like that viral wrestling video. He could wrestle a head like Al Snow used to do. I wouldn't care. I do like Gunther. I do like his goons. Hopefully they can make anything interesting with the Miz. You know, I'm still, the, the Miz just still doesn't do nothing for me. So if that becomes a storyline, it'll be another thing I don't watch. I wish I could sell you on him, man. I feel, I've I've done my best sales pitch, so I'm not going to I'm not going to pursue it any longer. I'm not pursuing relationships where the energy I put out is it being returned. Well, it's like our producer Especially Alex, in wrestling you know? relationships. Even the wrestlers I don't like, I love because they're in wrestling. But I'm, I just, I can't. I've came on board with Dominic Mysterio. I've came on board with yeah. Ricky Starks. I've, I've, I've changed my oh, tune yeah. on many, many, many wrestlers. But Miz still not there for me yet. I think you guys need to have a match and just settle this beef. <laughs> I'd love that. And 
as soon as he gets the IC title off, I, although I feel like he'd do the job eventually and, and keep Gunther going and just give him an awesome match. But then you guys square up because like you were at a you were at an event and his wife was there and like let's say you accidentally bumped into her and maybe like you elbowed her boob or something and he's like, "Yo, yeah. man, you just elbowed my girl's boob." And then Marisa hit you with the French, not a real French kiss, but with her finisher, the French kiss DDT. Fwah, bah, bah. And then Miz and you would have beef after that. that I would like be this good. idea. Also, the Miz has people don't realize how big I am. I'm six foot four. I'm two twenty. I think that people, like, you know, people and we're though. both big boys. Me and you are tall guys. Yeah. So if yeah, I just I put on some weight, bro, you got get some. Nah, two twenty's big. Get back in the weight room a little, a little more aggressive. I'm ready for you, Miz. And your dumb wife. That's what I've been doing. I, I just talking. Tr- Speaking of wrestlers and their com- wives, actually, you committed you know, just, so uh, you committed so quick. <laughs> I was trying to be out. It'll be, it'll be heel versus heel. You know who I saw at my gym was um, Miro. Oh yeah, dude, I love that guy, man. He's so cool and he's super nice in person, man. He's super nice. I walked right up to him. I said hi. I literally was like, you know, me and Freddie talking about you on our podcast. We, we, you know, we're big fans. Keep doing what you're doing. And then he was like, oh, cool. I mean, do you want me to be a guest? And I, I was like, no, no, no. Well, I'm not asking for anything. I just want to let you know you rule and we love you and we we keep, we keep doing what you're doing. And he's like, oh, thanks. Because I think he was expecting, you know, a self asking me, me asking sure. for a selfie. Well, or, most people. I don't want anything. Yeah. I just want to let him know he was awesome and he's the best. And so then that was it. He gave me love and I went, well, Went and worked out. Jeff, he's the nicest guy. I met him at a convention in San Antonio with his wife, who she was also very charming. And we talked for me. I don't know if you'd even remember this, but we talked for about 10, 15 minutes. And I thought he was the nicest dude. And then I remember leaving and going, I don't think he even knew who that who the hell I was. He was just being like super nice to <laughs> to like a stranger. Because like I don't know if like what country he's from scooby Doo might not right. have been there you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i was like yo i don't even think he knows who i am bro but he was when i brought cool up your right name up. he definitely he definitely knew who you were when i brought up your name but oh uh, well maybe but well maybe maybe, he remembers maybe that day you didn't i don't know well i'll ask him to be a guest on the show how do you like that he was he was awesome dude i don't know what they're doing with shinsuke but i wish i know he couldn't beat seth all right because nobody gets to beat seth oh we should talk about well, we'll talk about it on Thursday. I think Drew McIntyre is going to leave WWE. I really do. We'll talk about it Thursday, though. He couldn't. Shin couldn't beat Seth, which is okay. But I don't know where they go with him now. And I saw something online where it looks like he's going to go after Akira Tozawa. And I was like, yo, man, like you can't find someone higher up on the roster for him. Is this just he's going to get a quick squash and then move on to Gable or something? I, I don't. I don't know, but you know how much I love the Japanese wrestlers, and I hate when their storylines don't make sense or when it doesn't feel like there's a real commitment to them, and I'm starting to feel that way about Shinsuke again, and I don't know why I even believed in the first place. I know. It's tough, man. Like I said, the language barrier and, and just keep any storyline yeah. going is very difficult, but they're they're trying to do these vignettes. I mean, the vignettes were such a hit in the beginning, so hopefully... But Hopefully. subtitles are cool. My son watches anime all the time, and it's he only watches the Japanese ones with the English subtitles because he thinks the dubs don't sound as good. So I, I know kids I can be into it. Why can't grownups? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. When you watched Squid Games, did you watch it with the? Did you watch it with their language and then a Korean and then read it, or did you watch that? Listen to the dubbed over. When you pl- watch Squid Game. Truth, truth be told, really, the only television I watch is professional wrestling and live sports. Okay. I've never seen Squid Games. I'm n- I've well, like every horror film out of Korea. I watch movies and I watch pro wrestling and live stuff. But I've never seen I've never seen an episode of The Sopranos. I've never seen an episode really? of Breaking Bad. I've never seen an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> well, I, never, I don't watch what? TV, man. <laughs> Wait, you haven't seen a single episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? <laughs> no, nah, people get so mad. That's at me amazing. When I say it. That's gonna be the hot take Her of this fans episode. Get right mad. I Her bet, fans dude. get super mad at me. They'll be like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yo, I wasn't exactly the demographic, and I don't watch any TV, so relax." And they're like, "Well, I just why would you marry somebody?" I'm like, "Cause I'm not a fan. I fell in love with her." Yeah, like, I married her because I love her, about, not Buffy weirdos. the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they get super hot though, man. They get super that angry. Funny. It just That's makes me laugh. I don't mean to laugh in their face, but it's funny. <laughs> that energy's weird. 
That's the clip of the week. Forget <laughs> wrestling. They're going to be like, Freddie Prince Jr. said he's never seen a single episode. Of- yeah, right. That's really great. And he laughed about it. <laughs> All right. I haven't. I promise I've never seen any of any of your favorite TV shows. So don't. Right. Everyone can get their feelings hurt equally. Well, um, for Squid Game, I, well, Three's it, when, Company. I, Three's Company. I watched that show. That is. Remember a that? Long time. You were Company. a little. You were a kid when that was on. Yeah, but the reruns are on, and I watch them. They're on the Logo Channel. So there, I, I lied. All right, let's get to some wrestling that I had a story, and I'm not saying it's the best story, but okay. it's a story. And it's a story with the best wrestler in professional wrestling. And his commitment is equal, whether it's the story he did with CM Punk, which is an all-time great, or the Adam Cole best bros for life story, and anything he's done in between. And they haven't all worked or gotten over equally. And I'm not saying the quality of all of them is equal by any stretch of the imagination. But his commitment and his diligence to this character and its continued evolution is the one thing that makes you watch whatever MJF does. And the story that he's been dealing with is not a story I like. He's had his title stolen. I didn't like when the title was stolen from Jade Cargill. I thought that was silly. I I think it's silly anytime because you just go to the commissioner, you go, oh, my title was stolen. And then the commissioner goes, return the title or you're fired. And then that's the end of that story. That's how it realistically ends. It's it's never going to be believable ever. So I, I don't like the story first off, but the story he's in is that. And in order for him to get his belt, which is his back from Jay White um, with his exotic accent, is for him to beat him in a quads match, four on four tag match. And since Max doesn't have any friends, good luck finding a team. And so the story for Max has been, I've pissed off everyone in this company. Everybody hates me. Nobody likes me. I guess I'll go eat worms, which is the old (laughs) nursery rhyme. And he's, and it's a very juvenile story. It's very young, but I think his experience in the Adam Cole thing and making all that stuff very 80s and funny have helped him kind of pull some of this off. And it hasn't all worked, but he has had some moments where he called, like he's looking for teammates and he sees Darby Allen's locker room and, He's like, man, I'm not asking this guy. So he just writes emo bitch on his door. So little things like that, that that keep the MJF character in character are the little moments that save it. It's a tough story to get over. And here's the weirdest thing, Jeff, and I don't get this. And maybe, maybe I'm overreacting. How the hell can you have championship matches when you have a championship match scheduled at the pay-per-view? Everybody knows you're going to win. Nobody thinks you're going to lose. Because you have to have the big match at the pay. I don't understand it. I don't understand how those stories are still getting told in this day and age. What do you think? It's like it's like when they do a title match at like a a non TV taping. They're like, and tonight the Rock will face Stone Cold for the title, and you're like, this is a this is an untelevised Tuesday night. There's just no way he's gonna lose the title. They're not gonna come back on Monday Night Raw and be like. You know, in Seattle, Washington on Tuesday, The Rock actually lost. The, it's like, what is this? This is so s- stupid. Yeah, but it's the same they thing. They did it, it makes once no with sense. tag titles. They did it once with tag titles when I worked there. And and I was laughing because I was like, tag titles? Nobody's going to care. That's just gonna, that's not going <laughs> to no make someone notices. believe. We have to go to the live event because the world title might change hands. Like, nobody's ever said that. <laughs> But it's interesting they'd make that kind of strange wrestling error in this day and age, you know, in a different way. Also, it's kind of it's kind of weird. I agree. So MJF is going locker to locker, dressing room to dressing room. He tries to get Kenny Omega because they just had a match for free. You guys for free. Kenny Omega versus MJF, which is like, thanks, Tony. That's super nice and cool. But. I would I would have paid, and so would have oh everyone God. else. I use the Bleacher Report app to buy your stuff, man. Come on, dude. Like, I, yeah. I I can't I can't give you my money. Like, what's going on? That's such, <laughs> that's I mean, it's great as a fan. Like, that's party on. But on a Saturday night show, I, I guess maybe he's just trying to get eyes on on the new show. I, I don't know why else you do it because I would have paid the 50, 60 bucks to to watch those dudes wrestle. But I digress. 
he he goes to Kenny Omega. Chris Jericho comes out and acts like a spoiled brat, like a sixteen year old yeah. girl, and is like, "I'm tagging with Kenny tonight." And then <laughs> yeah. Max is like, oh, "He looked okay, rough fine, too." Whatever. Uh, Jericho looked a little rough in that. In the, when he popped out of that door, I was going, "Whoa!" <laughs> like well, you forget that Dude, they do some push ups. Or they use a band before they come out and they get all oiled up and stuff. But when it was just I was going like to say, a, he might not have tanned up yet. He might not have gotten that nice tan on yet. That that sweet tough. Canadian tan. <laughs> all my Canadians up north and your sweet tans. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> so he keeps he keeps looking and he runs into the acclaimed who he this is the part that he kind of draws on that 80s kind of comedy. And he's just not having it from the acclaimed. And they really or at least one of them really wants to tag with him and help him out and they they see some good in him the same way adam cole saw sees good in him and uh he's like no get out of here and he runs into someone else that he doesn't want to tag with wardlow almost chokes him to death and he sells super hard against the wall while he's getting the life choked out of him and wardlow's like you took everything from me and i'm gonna take everything from you <laughs> he throws him out of the door no he just storms off and then in a one shot max is still like you know checking stuff out the acclaimed once again he has to deal with he deals with jeff jared and jay lethal and and their group and we don't know who he's gonna end up with who's who's max gonna have if we all know and it doesn't matter everybody knew it was going to be the acclaimed they give him this garbage bag and he looks in and he almost pukes and then of course when he comes out what was in the garbage bag was his own max jacob friedman acclaimed gear which by the way he looked sick in i was like yo the pink yeah, looks, looks really cool. good on him man <laughs> and he sold it so well like he hated walking out in it he hated the way it looked he hated the way he looked he hated his teammates he didn't want to see i love the eye I'll roll to s- the camera too yeah it totally like when breaks it, the like when a claim wanted to give him the scissors and he just he looks at the he like looks right into the barrel and is like Ugh. like it's, it's so <laughs> great to acknowledge the camera like in that moment was so so perfect. He's super smart, man. He, you see him uh, the the camera. You see his mouth say, "I'll never scissor you," which was great. I thought <laughs> I loved that. And then the match was super fun. I didn't think I don't normally like trios matches, especially like quads matches, thing, things of that nature. They told a good story. Switchblade would never let Max get his hands on him. He kept like being a bitch and just like pussing out and going out the side and never, you know, letting him. So it makes you want to see them in this main event, which again is another reason why he shouldn't be having championship matches because the threat of him losing destroys your pay-per-view. So why, why would you do that? Which is still super weird to me, but they finally get to the finish. And before the finish, Max has this moment where he beats up everybody and he does this ridiculous kangaroo kick, man. And I don't know how he got it over, but the crowd goes bananas for it. They get they go bananas just for the hype of it, where he pretends to be a kangaroo. This is some 1986 shit, y'all, <laughs> and he's bringing it in the modern era of wrestling. And they're not booing him out of the building because his <laughs> commitment is so hardcore. And then, of course, he kicks everybody out of the ring, and the bad guy at Switchblade sneaks in and gets him in his finisher, which looks just like Cody Rhodes's finisher. And bam! And he nails him. One, two, three. So now the threat. Of him losing his championship exists, y'all. Could 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 Switchblade take it? Could the man with the exotic accent be the new AEW world champion? I say no. I don't think he's going to be the one. Not yet. I think Max is going to retain. And of course, he has to retain against everyone else or, or the match goes away. Now, I tried to sell this storyline as well as I could because it ran throughout the whole show, Jeff. So that's why it was long-winded and I apologize. Did you buy one second of anything? That's what we're here for, buddy. Thank you, man. But did you buy any of it, even one second of it? I didn't hate it. I also think it's like, you know, Roman Reigns has been the champion over in WWE for nine million days in a row, and I'm so tired of it. I've been tired of it. I then was fine with it, then got tired of it again. It's just so stupid and (laughs) dumb. Whereas with MJF, I'm like, nope, just keep him the champ. Just keep him the champ. Keep him the champ. I like, I can't get enough of MJF being the champion. It's and I, and I don't, I don't want anyone. That's, I don't see anybody who should have it other than him. I will say, usually we do like a match of the week. If I had a moment yeah. of the week, it would be my boy Wardlow choking MJF in that backstage. <laughs> it was uh, great, and, man. 
it was great. Wardlow never wears hats. He had a hat on backwards. You could barely tell it was him. He also had like his back to the camera. So I was kind of like in yeah, the, fr- that's I, I'm fault. friends with Wardlow and I was still was like, who is this? Like who, who's grabbing him? Who's this yeah. giant grabbing him? And he just sold the lines to Max and Max sold the choke and did just the whole thing. So I personally, I know that I don't speak for the wrestling world, but I personally would love to see that feud. But I'm fine with MJF just being the champ for, for a lot longer until we've got someone worth their salt. What would you think if somehow Edge and MJF's paths crossed and that became a storyline, Edge versus MJF? Yeah, I'd like that. I'd still be rooting for MJF. I'm still, you know, Edge is... So would I. Yeah, I think it's very strange how AEW works. I've still never gotten my mind around it where people just go, yeah, I like Cesaro in WWE. And the second he comes to like AEW, they're like, Claudio Castanoli. Like they're like, they can't get enough. And they're like, Dean Ambrose. Yeah, sure. And then he comes to AEW, like, John Moxley. Like, I just can't understand how these wrestlers are average in WWE. And then the second they walk through that ramp, everyone at AEW, like, oh my, I can't believe Edge is here. It's like, I just don't, I, I, I'm not one of those guys. Like, I, I like all these guys, but like, that's still just Edge to me, an older wrestler who i watched literally last month i have a theory on that i have a theory on that and i i think there are so many people out there that that listen to this show even that pick one or the other and i think they see wwe as this oppressive not very creative place to work based on shoot interviews that wrestlers have done after they left the company And so they see AEW as a place where they can be free, whether this is true, whether that's true or not is irrelevant. That's the perception of it is that it's a place of freedom. It's the Wild West people have described it as. But you can be you and you can find a way to get over. Look at Ricky Starks. He found a way to get over. So I think that's why they get excited. Like when Brian Danielson came over and they were like, oh, my God. It's Brian, the American Dragon Danielson, because they were like, he he doesn't have to do the goofy stuff anymore. He can be the great wrestler that we know he he's always been. So I think that's sure. why they do it. Me, I watch both because I just think wrestling's sick and I, yeah, I, I love, love fight scenes too. and movies. And it's just like watching a bunch of fight scenes. <laughs> I think that you're definitely right about that. And I think most of the AEW fans would agree. But I think there is something more too because it happens the other way. Cody Rhodes, just middle of of AEW, not, not a huge star, not a not a underling. You know, well, they got tired of comes to they comes to WB main event. Uh, oh, yeah. God, can you believe it came from AEW? Like put him in a match with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Like you, it's there's just something weird about wrestlers crossing over. And maybe we've been trained since like the Monday Night Wars or something. But I've never if I like a guy in AEW, I'm going to like him in WB. And if I like a guy in WB, I'll like him in AEW. But that that transfer of 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 companies doesn't make me like a guy so it's just yeah it might be forever a mystery but i think your theory is true for most wrestling fans all right we're traveling to friday night smackdown and again there's not a lot of stories at least none that you want to wrap your wrap yourself around i will say this they're gonna give a story to santos escobar based on some stuff we'll discuss on the Thursday episode on on Unsanctioned. So I know there will be some story with the LWO, and I love the LWO, so I'll be tuning in for that. But outside of that, the only story worth mentioning is LA Knight versus Roman Reigns. And even this one has been hard because they've been selling it so big for LA Knight that you knew he had no chance of victory at the pay-per-view. You just you just knew it because he was just getting he was getting over too much and Roman was playing it too cool on things that should have hurt the Roman Reigns character's feelings a little bit because you've seen the Roman Reigns character get bothered. And I I thought that was uh, not a mistake, but a miss a misstep creatively. There should have been some scripted stuff in there where Roman could react a little bit. The direction for Roman would be to react to like you're taking that a little more personally from this upstart who can't be contained. He can't, he's like a wildfire. He, he can't be controlled. He's LA Knight, And every single fan that screams, yeah, is another tree that's caught on fire. Like that's, that's more how it should have felt. And instead they made it about, I don't, I don't know what they made it about. It lacked direction. It lacked focus. It was just two guys saying, we're going to kick each other's ass. 
Now, I love LA Knight. I didn't think these were their best promos, either guy's best promo. And I didn't think he was going to win. So I wasn't that excited to, to watch it. The Peacock that I did watch it on, which we'll discuss on Thursday, y'all need to step your stream game up because I got that yeah. buffering signal way too many times. And that's the only app that that or the only streaming service I have that that buffers. But anyway, I do believe there's going to be a story for Santos Escobar, and I do believe he's going to turn heel. And we'll get more into that tomorrow. But what did you think, Jeff? Did you like SmackDown? Was there anything that stood out to you? Nothing crazy stood out to me. Like, you know, I'm the biggest mark in the world for uh, L.A. Knight. So I did like that. But (laughs) I just think that anytime I've gotten so defeated that like anytime someone is in the ring or in a storyline or even in the same arena as Roman Reigns, I just don't think anyone like they're just never going to let them get beat. So it just kind of becomes stale to me a little bit. And so besides L.A. Knight and his antics, I, d- I didn't see much of a uh, uh, SmackDown that stood out. I mean, we can talk about Logan Paul, which was which was I don't know. I love Logan Paul. And I'm happy to see more of him on on TV. I, I thought when he first came over that he was just going to be this guy that's like a big pay-per-view guy. We'll use him to sell tickets with. But he's he's sure. turning out to be like a pretty regular wrestler. Somewhat. I, I think he's committing time, effort, and energy to it. And I I, I respect that. I, I still think he's hit and miss. He's only I had eight he's matches. Better as a, I, I mean with his promos and stuff and the stories that oh, he's okay. in. Like I think yeah, he's yeah, better yeah. as the baby face, but the people just hate him so much that he kind of has to be the heel. And I don't think he's naturally – I don't think that's what he's better served as at the, in, at the end of the day. Because I think in real life he's probably a pretty nice guy On besides all the – the stuff that's happened, I feel like he's learned from a lot of the choices he's made. And I don't say he's mistakes because they weren't mistakes. Those were choices. So he's a grown up. Yeah. But I think he's learned a lot from that. And I, I think he'd be better served at the end of the day being a, a baby face than a heel. Just a quick correction is that it's a Jeff thing, not a not a not a wrestling thing. I was putting Logan Paul originally in this. In the same camp as like a Cindy Lauper and a Mr. T and a Mike Tyson and a <laughs> Snooky. I was putting him in this like we're just putting him Snooky. in a WrestleMania match for celebrity. And it turns out that he isn't. And that's so it was more of a my my fault than than the actual wrestling fans or wrestling. So just, just to be clear. Yeah, no, dude, you're good. If people get mad, just get mad at me. All right. Jeff's good, <laughs> dude. I'm and I know he's a good dude, and I, I don't get mad at, back at you guys, and I don't get my feelings hurt, and you guys can get mad at me all you want. Just a stand-up comic. His life is to make y'all feel good. It's time <laughs> for the match of the week, Mr. Jeff Dye. Mine is easy. Bianca Belair is back. She had a wow. match with Bailey, and she was freaking perfect. Every single move she hit was perfect. She didn't. And I was waiting for I, I, I didn't want to. There were other matches that I dug. I didn't think this would be my favorite match. I was thinking about going. I actually did start cooking dinner with them when the match started. And then I looked back and was like, yo, man. First of all, both girls are looking good. Second of all, I'm not even lying. I was like, yo, man, both these because it's a different body type than like the stick figure Barbie dolls. Like when I worked there. It was everybody looked like a Barbie. And now there's women that are bigger. There's the Raquel Rodriguez's. There's the Rhea Ripley's, the world freaking champion. There's these bigger, healthier body types that aren't these impossible sort of standards that women can never like live up to. You know what I'm saying? So I just like that it looked like two athletic women out there kicking each other's ass. And I'm telling you, they made Bianca look great. She beat the shit out of Bailey, (laughs) whipped her ass, and Bailey took it and took it stiff and the reason to put it over the match is they brought back that hair slap she has that clapper in her braid oh yeah and they took it away for some reason she would use it in nxt and it would go whack and when it hits it's so loud it echoes through the whole arena and she did i was like oh shit they brought back the hair clap and i thought it was awesome and that's my match of the week dude I know it's a slow week in wrestling when your match of the week is bailey versus bianca blair 
Freddie. That was your match of the week. T- we had a well. It was a slow week in wrestling, but that is my yeah. match of the week. But what you said is Love true it. as well. You're, you're a good man. I will say also too the uh, the idea that uh, the, the the wrestlers used to look like Barbies when you were there and stuff like that. It is it is. It doesn't make sense to make the wrestlers look like Barbies. This is the one place where we don't need hot chicks to look like models. Couldn't agree Pro more. Pro wrestling. Couldn't agree more. Like it, I get it. If it's Instagram and you, you know, it's a model or if it's the runway for Maxim, make them look like Barbies. But in, in wrestling, these guys are giant, muscly, fat and gross, long hairs. Like the, you see all the different body types of fighters, you know? So it's weird to have a have a – Barbies. Be yeah, you want your big, female like, wrestlers to look tough and jacked and huge. Absolutely. Beth Phoenix, she, so, was, she was the one that like broke that mold over there when I was there. Go ahead. Well, we had Luna Vachon, who was a strong little... Uh, she wasn't freak. there when I was there, though, but yes. Oh, I see, I see. Before, Yeah, okay. When you were there, I get it. My bad. All right, so my, my match of the week is it's a little weird, but Darby Allen versus the monster Lance Archer. This match... I liked it for so many reasons. One, very obvious. I love giant guys, and I'm a big Lance Archer guy just because he's a big freak and he's super strong. You do but love him, yeah. Darby Allen sells so Dude, hard that I actually think he's, he's going to die. die soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's too hardcore. Dude got power bombed. I can't. Than, or not, sorry, not power bombed. He got choke slammed so hard. I couldn't believe the choke slam. Then Lance Archer, the murder hawk, picks him up again and choke slams him on the outside, like the side of the ring, the hardest part of yes. the ring. I forget what it's called. And what's That's that what JR always called? says. The, the apron. The apron. Yeah, the ring. The apron. ring apron. So he gets choke slammed onto that very, very hard. And then there was a little cameo by Jake the Snake, which I thought was very weird and showed how out of touch Jake the Snake is like when he was pretending like he was about to hit him with a skateboard and the ref came over it's like you can kind of tell like it's been a minute since Jake was uh, in front <laughs> of the camera doing stuff but whatever so if if Darby Allen keeps selling power bombs and choke slams and these moves like he tried to do his move but Lance Archer just caught him so it's kind of like he was a jobber but like a great ass awesome jobber yeah. anyways he's gonna die soon also, Jake the Snake's just probably going to die soon. Anyways, uh, he looked rough. Oh, stop. Uh, but- now you are going to get in trouble. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. He looked a little rough. But that was my match of the week for sure. Darby Allen versus the Murder Hawk monster, Lance Archer. Yeah, dude, I couldn't even watch that match. It's hard for me to watch Darby Allen matches because he's really doing it. Like, it's not, yeah, it's not, he's, he's just like, no, nah, you don't have to protect me. They're like, no, 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 let me protect you. He's like, no, 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 I'm just going to land on a coffin. Oh, dude, it was like, you're going to land on your feet. No, on my back and the back of my head. Oh, okay. Party on. <laughs> yeah, 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 I just also, can't. It's too hardcore. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. I can't watch it. Can you slam me from six feet into the steps? You know, those steps that have no give oh, or cushion or, or, dude, he just takes everything sharp so, on so, so hard wild so that's my mo- that's my match of the week i know it wasn't like a big main event thing but i think ending this episode on taking it hard is the best way to end the episode <laughs> congratulations also sorry jake the snake i love jake the snake maybe i could turn her into something worthy of my attention <laughs> or was it affection which one did he say you guys will help me out <laughs> anyway tune in tomorrow unsanctioned thursdays on behalf of jeff Dye and freddie prince jr this is wrestling with friends this has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.